A couple of months ago, I created a video review about the Space Controller plugin by Sound Particles. And uh, the basic idea of that plugin is actually pretty nice. The idea is that you would use your phone in order to position sound in three-dimensional space. And the way this would work is, if you wanted sound to come from a certain direction, for example, what you would do is you would take your phone, open up the application, you would point your phone into the direction where that sound is supposed to come from, and then pretty much press a button. And that would register with the plugin in your digital audio workstation and would set the panning of that sound source accordingly. Now, while this sounds really interesting in principle because it gives you some haptic control about where everything is in your sound field, I didn't really care that much for the execution. I didn't really find it they find it that particularly useful and therefore I immediately deleted the plugin after I actually reviewed it and never looked back on it actually. Now, a couple of weeks ago with uh, the release of Noendo 12, uh, it was also announced that Sound Particle Space Controller is now directly supported from within Noendo 12. So we don't really need a plugin anymore. We can just use the Space Controller application on our phone and we can use that Space Controller application in order to control the position of Dolby Atmos objects and Dolby Atmos beds. And that adds a completely new dimension uh, that is actually interesting. And I therefore thought it might make sense to give it a second look and have a second review and see if it's gotten any better. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's have a look at the Noendo version of the space controller plugin by sound particles and let's see if it's worth its money. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. And if any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. An invite link is in the description below. And uh, if you get any value of these types of videos, please don't forget to press the like button because YouTube wants us to do that. Now, with that being said, let's get right into the space controller. The original space controller was actually pretty simple. It was uh, it consisted of a plugin um, that you had to purchase um, and uh, an application that you had on your phone. And I have that application here actually. So let me just switch to my phone here. Uh, it essentially consists of a very big button that you can press. And if I press that button, it would communicate. It turns blue, and then it would communicate information of the phone, so positional data from the phone to that uh, plugin, which served as a panning device. And that really was everything there was to it. So pretty neat, pretty nice, pretty simple actually. So you would think why didn't I like it? Well, the reason for that is very, very simple. The pricing. Um, if we go to the pricing, uh, we see that it comes in two different versions. One is the standard version, one is the studio version. The standard version comes in at a hefty 100 bucks and for 100 bucks essentially what you get is you get uh, just stereo panning, just left, right. And I never quite figured out why somebody would pay 100 bucks just to be able to pan between left and right i found that to be a little bit excessive now it would be much much nicer to to be able to pan uh, surround sound or uh, spatial sound and you can do that with the studio version however the studio version comes in they have the 400 bucks and as nice as it is i just didn't think that was worth 400 bucks and that's essentially why i deleted it However, with the release of Noendo came a new version of that plugin and a new pricing model and one that is actually a little bit more realistic. Uh, it's still not cheap. It comes in at 150 bucks, uh, but it is uh, at least, you know, kind of not completely out of range. So if you are working with Noendo and you want to have some haptic way for controlling the position of Dolby Atmos objects, this might actually be something that you're interested in. Because if you, if you can afford a Dolby Atmos music production studio, you're probably not going to bother that much about 150 bucks for a good controlling software. So how does it work? Well, first of all, once again, uh, there are actually two different versions. So the one that we need for Noendo is called Space Controller OSC. OSC stands for Open Sound Control. That is the protocol that it uses in order to communicate from the phone to Noendo. And uh, it, uh, once again, is uh, doing that without any additional plugin. So it's communicating into Noendo directly. So let's open up the Space Controller OSC plugin. And the first thing that we see is that it looks slightly different. So in addition to this button that I, once again, 
then can press and then it will actually turn blue. And now also have information about distance. This was one of my main uh, concerns about the original version that you could not really control the distance. Uh, you can do that now. So in the in this plugin, we can control the distance. And uh, other than that, it's pretty much the same. So I can point it in any direction that I want to and it will communicate the azimuth and elevation. And uh, in, the, in addition, I can change the, the distance of that sound object and that will then be communicated into Noendo. So the question now is how do I set that up? And there are a couple of things that I need to do. The first thing is I need to set up the IP address of the workstation on which I'm running Noendo. So I'm pressing the uh, settings button on the top right and that opens up the settings menu. Uh, we first of all need to make sure that the host is set to Noendo 12. Uh, we also want to have distance information and uh, the uh, application allows you to decide whether you want to communicate XYZ coordinates, so essentially the Cartesian coordinates, uh, XYZ, or if you want to communicate azimuth elevation and distance, uh, so polar coordinates. For no end, it doesn't really make any difference, or no end will understand both. Uh, the standard is to set it to XYZ. And uh, then uh, essentially what we need to do is we need to set the computer IB that, that is uh, sort of in the middle here. In my particular case, it is 192.168.1.34. In your case, that will be different. Whatever sort of your computer has as IP, put it in here. And then you need to select the port. I think the standard port that it uses is 8880. I set it to 8080 for, for whatever reason. Uh, it doesn't really make any difference what port you're using. Just make sure that you remember the type of port that, you, that you're using. Now, once you've done that, the body application essentially will do is it will send the information, the um, azimuth elevation distance or XYZ uh, information depending on how you set it up and will send it through OSC messages to your workstation where you can pick it up with Noendo. Um, now the first thing I would like to do is I would like to really find out what type of OSC messages I'm receiving. So let's just check if my workstation actually receives the correct OSC information. Now, the easiest way to figure out if my computer actually receives OSC messages from the space control application is by uh, opening up the OSC router application. Uh, it, this is an application that we've used in a couple of previous videos. Uh, it's available for free. You can download it. I'm going to post a link in the description below. And what it essentially allows you to do is it allows you to take in OSC messages and then reroute them to different IP addresses or to different ports, depending on what you need. Here, what we are going to do is we're just going to use it in order to listen to port 8080 and kind of see what's coming in on port 8080, because that is the port that the space controller application is supposed to send to. So let's press the big button on the, on the space controller application and let's see if I'm receiving any messages and indeed I'm I'm receiving any. And uh, these messages are, uh, or the structure of these messages is such that the message header is ADM slash object slash one slash XYZ. The one corresponds to the number of the object. So this uh, space controller application allows me to address uh, various sound objects and each sound object has a certain number. We will see in a second how that works. And this is uh, coded into the message header. And then uh, as the parameters, I'm receiving X, Y, and Z coordinate. and uh, uh, that is essentially passed on to Noendo and Noendo essentially processes those. Now, the reason this is interesting is because uh, the fact that we now know how these OSC messages look like allows us to hack the system, actually. We could technically take in these OSC messages, translate them into something else and use them creatively. So, for example, for controlling synthesizers or for controlling other parameters in your DAW. And I'm actually planning on creating a couple of videos in the not too distant future where I use that uh, for other purposes other than just controlling the position of sound objects. So if you're interested in these types of little hacks, um, watch out on my, on my channel. I'm going to post a couple of videos soon. But in this video, I'm really only interested in how the space controller application works with Noendo. So what I've done here is I've opened up an empty project and I added an instrument track. So just so that we have something to pan around, uh, it's some strings uh, that I attached to this project. And uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to make uh, Noendo ready for receiving the OSC messages. Now, if you read the documentation that is provided by uh, Steinberg, you will read that the first step that they ask you to do is to create an output bus that is a surround sound output bus. And uh, while this is one way to do that, it's actually not really necessary. The one thing that you need to uh, know is that the space controller application can only communicate with the multi-panner. 
And uh, so if you want to use the space controller in a connection with Nuendo, the only thing we really need to make sure is that all the tracks that we want to pan around have the multi-panner on it. Now, the easiest way to do that, obviously, is to create a surround sound output track. But once again, this isn't really necessary. We just need to make sure that the panner that we're using is the multi-panner, and then uh, the space control application will be able to communicate with it. The way I'm going to do that here is to add a surround track and then route the instrument track into that particular sound on track and then make sure that the panner is the correct panner that we're using so let's let's do that so let's add a group track and this group track let's do a 7.1.2 let's assume this is going to be a bed um doesn't really make any difference let's call it a bed let's assume we are starting a Dolby atmos project and we are starting up a bed and uh, then let's uh, route the uh, instrument track into the bed track and that will essentially make sure that the panning device that I'm having here now is the multi-panner. And that is uh, important because once again, only the, uh, the space control application, uh, the space control application on your phone can only communicate with the multi-panner. To connect the space control application with Nuendo, I now need to take advantage of an option that already actually existed before Nuendo 12. It actually was already a, a something that you could do in no, Nuendo 11. So this is actually not particularly new. What you need to do is we need to go into the studio settings and under the OSC object position tracking, we now need to set the uh, tracking ports to the um, uh, track to the port that we set in the space controller application. And what that will essentially do, it will listen to port 8080 for incoming OSC messages that follow a certain structure. And this is exactly the structure that uh, the um, space control application is sending out. So as soon as we set the port and we activate, the uh, Noendo will actually receive these, uh, these messages. Now, before we can actually use them, we need to uh, take the individual objects as they are coming in and we need to map them to the individual multi-panner that we have in our, in our project. Now, if I go down to object number one, uh, and once again, this is, uh, if you remember in the OSC router, we had uh, object one. So this is the first object. So we can actually have multiple objects. Actually, we can have more than those. Uh, so so there, there are almost unlimited number of objects. Not really unlimited, but we have a large number of objects. So what we need to do is we need, need to map this first object to the, uh, the, the panel that we have created. And there's, uh, once again, the, 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 uh, the tracks that are going to show up here are the tracks that have the multi panel uh, on it. So let's, let's, uh, connect that to the Hallian Sonic uh, track. And as soon as I do that, and let me just open up my space controller application. If I now click on the button on the space controller, I can actually see how the um, panning device, and let's just zoom in a little because in order to make that a little more obvious. Um, so if I now essentially kind of move the, the uh, my phone, I can control the position of that object, I can control the distance, and that is pretty much it. Now, in order to see how this works with multiple objects, let, let's just put another instrument track in our little project. Uh, so let's go back to our project and let's add a second instrument track. Let's do another Harley on Sonic track. And let's just, I don't know, let's just take a piano of some sort acoustic grand piano that sounds cool uh, and uh, let's uh, route that into the bed as well and uh, here we are and let's just route that into the bed as well as soon as i route that into the bed i once again have the multi panner and that essentially means that i can now route an object in our osc settings into that particular panner so let's go back into our studio settings, the OSC object position tracking, and let's uh, click. If I now click here, I see that I have a second showing up. The first one is already in use. That is object number one. The second one is object number two. And I can now switch between those two objects. And the way this is really done is by going on top here at the very top, you see link and it currently says one. If I click on the button to the right, it essentially, I can increase that. Uh, if I click on the left, I can decrease it. And that is essentially the object number. So if I'm clicking on number one and I uh, click on the button, essentially I communicating information to object number one. And you can actually see that in the project 
by uh, the um, panning device. Uh, but you can also see that in the OSC position object tracking window here, uh, by this little button is now blue, that, that, is, that is now active. And if I switch to number two in my application, so let me just click on the right arrow and uh, change that to number two. And if I now uh, communicate that, I'm now seeing the information at the second uh, object coming in and the second object is connected to the panning uh, on the second track that we did. So let's just see how that works in practice. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to um, position the object and simultaneously playing a sound. So let's just go back in and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, object number one. Object number one is the, uh, the strings. So let me just do that. And if I play that string sound, it's sort of coming from currently uh, from, from the center middle position. And if I am now clicking on the button, uh, I can move that sound to the left or to the right and that is essentially done through this little application and uh, once again this is actually fairly straightforward to do and uh, you know kind of uh, considering that uh, you can actually do that with the multi-panner that, that essentially means it also can be done with the uh, Dolby Atmos panner. So the multi-panner is the, the panner that is used in a Dolby Atmos setup. So if you're having a Dolby Atmos project, um, you will actually see these uh, object tracks and the bed tracks pop up uh, in the OEC settings and you can route the individual objects from the space control application into those panners. So this works actually reasonably well. So uh, what is my final verdict um, in terms of, uh, is it any better than the original space controller? And I would say yes. Uh, first of all, it comes in at a price that is not no longer as ridiculous as the price for the original space controller. I mean, seriously, 400 bucks, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I, I, I would purchase that. But 150 is okay. And uh, to be perfectly honest, if you are somebody who can afford a Dolby Atmos production environment, then you would certainly not be have any difficulties with 150 bucks for a good control application if it is a good application so so it is certainly interesting um do you really need it probably not it is something that is nice to have but not really necessary so if you have 150 bucks to spare it's one way to go it's certainly not completely useless uh, it actually is quite fun it's not that particularly expensive and it can be useful you know quite, quite frankly so so if you if you particularly if you have a real atmos production environment where you have really kind of a fully immersive speaker environment, this might actually be quite useful. This is really everything I wanted to say today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section or join my Discord community in that link once again in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.